welcome to Worship for March and our theme of evil. I kind of feel like I ought to say it, evil. It seems like a hard thing to talk about. Not the most you-you thing in the world. The late great you-you minister Peter Rabel used to accuse us of being bluebirds, his term for having no doctrine of evil. And he was not entirely wrong. We, you use, tend to err on the sign of optimism, of finding the good in people, of cherishing what's right. And I love that about us. But it's also true that the fact of evil is inescapable. It's all too present. We see it all too much. We see greed despoiling the earth and impoverishing people. We see folks who kill groups of random strangers with guns or bombs or airplanes. We see neo-Nazis rallying in the streets and when a protester is deliberately run over, the response from certain politicians is to try to make it legal to run over protesters. There is evil afoot. Terrible things happen. Now, not all terrible things are what I would call evil. Floods or earthquakes, tsunamis have devastating effects but there's no choice involved. They just happen. Cancer isn't evil, it's just bad. Evil is a choice. Evil is choosing to treat subjects as objects, to treat beings as if they are things to choose to live in the world in a way that others don't get to have their own subjecthood, that you don't view other people, other beings, as having their own self, their own right to live and express themselves. They become things to be used. Evil happens when people stop being people and become things. And People do make that choice. Evil happens. But I think it's important to at least my understanding of evil that we understand that it isn't really a matter of people being evil, or for that matter, people being good, because every last person does some things that are evil and some things that are good. And when you try to identify people themselves as being evil people or good people, then you run into problems. For one thing, if people are evil, you lose the possibility of redemption. And I have heard so much from our prisoner members about lives that matter, even in the face of terrible choices, even in the face of series of terrible choices, people who are going on to choose good, to choose a spirituality and a life focused on compassion. If they are evil people, then what does that mean? Does that take away bad deeds? Does it make their good deeds not possible? Or is it just a matter that some actions are bad and some actions are good, which is what I would say. Because the other side of that is that there are good people and evil people. Almost all of us will put ourselves in the category of the good people. And once you're in the category of the good people, it's awfully easy to just dismiss the things that you do wrong. Because after all, you couldn't be doing evil. You're a good person. And good people do some awful things. And so it makes a lot more sense to identify not evil people and good people, but evil actions. Actions that turn subjects into objects. 
that turn people into things, and good actions, actions that are constructive, that promote love and compassion. But it gets a little bit more complicated than that because no action exists in a vacuum. And the fact of the matter is that there are systems of evil, entire interrelated and interlocking systems that we call names like racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia and ableism and ageism. Those things are systems designed to turn people into things. And we all participate in them in a variety of different ways. But I think that it's helpful, as with people, to move away from saying just this is a bad thing, which is certainly true, to try and find evil actions, because evil actions are changeable, they're fixable. And so we talk about dismantling racism, which is a phrase I love because we don't talk about dismissing racism or disappearing racism or banishing racism. We talk about dismantling it, which implies taking apart piece by complicated interlocking piece to address the pieces. Here is language that better expresses people's personhood. Here are banking practices that are more just. Here are policies of policing that are better for communities and individuals. Here are ways of cultural appreciation as opposed to cultural appropriation. The list goes on and on. It's complicated and it's overwhelming, but it's not impossible. Making all the bad things go away and calling people evil if they have failed to make all the bad things go away doesn't help. What helps is piece by piece to identify the bits of evil and to change them. That's something we can do, not perfectly, not because we are going to become good people, but because we are capable over and over again of choosing justice, of choosing compassion, of choosing to see one another as who we are. We are capable over and over again of choosing good.